Many thanks for joining us again on the newsroom. I am Victoria Akonde, and these are the headlines we are tracking at the moment. Labor unions have accused some state governors of frustrating the success of the negotiation with the federal government on a new minimum wage. Head of the Department of Information, NLC, Benson Upa, who made this accusation in a televised interview on Monday, said that a few governors were causing trouble and disrupting progress with ill intent, adding that despite the federal government's increase to 62,000 naira, the governors were still willing to pay the initial 60,000 naira, which he described as an act of mischief. 35 members of the House of Representatives have proposed the bill for an act demanding the constitutional alteration to provide for the rotation of executive powers among the six geopolitical zones. The lawmakers, led by Representative Ikenga Ugo Chinere, made the call while addressing a news conference at the National Assembly in Abuja on Monday. They also want an amendment to the Constitution to provide for a single tenure of six years for the President and Governors of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The ECOWAS court has dismissed an application filed by former National Security Advisor, retired Colonel Sambo Dasuki, praying the court to compel Nigeria to enforce his judgment delivered in his favor on October 4, 2016. Justice Sengu, the judge, while delivering judgment in Abuja on Dasuki's application for enforcement, dismissed it on the ground that the court lacked jurisdiction to entertain or enforce the earlier judgment. Troops of Operation Real Punch and Operation Forest Sanity 2 have killed two bandits during clearance operations in the Rijana area of Kachia local government area Kaduna State. The State Commissioner of Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Aruan, in a statement on Monday, said the troops encountered the bandits in a gunfight, resulting in two deaths while many others fled with gunshot wounds. On business, the government of the United Kingdom has helped to attract $85 million investment into Nigeria's manufacturing sector through its Manufacturing Africa program since 2020. Deputy British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Johnny Baxter, disclosed this at a ceremony to announce the funding of three Nigerian-based clean energy companies to expand renewable energy access in the country. And on the foreign scene, at least 10 people have been killed and 33 injured in India after suspected militants fired at a bus carrying Hindu pilgrims in Jammu and Kashmir. According to police officials, the bus driver lost control, causing it to plunge into a gulf in the Riasi district of Jammu. While rescue operations have concluded, the Indian Army and police are conducting a search operation to track down the attackers. And finally on sports, Nigerian athletes have excelled at the USTAF New York Grand Prix on Sunday with favor of Philly winning the women's 100m and Udodi Unwuzurike triumphant in men's 100 meters. Udodi, a former world 120 200 meter champion, took the men's 100 meter title in 10.24 seconds, edging out American duo Kendall Williams and Ja Austin. This marks a strong showing for him as he heads into the Nigerian Olympic trials next weekend in Benin City, Edo State. These are the headlines making the rounds at this time. Join us again at the top of the hour for more stories. I am Victoria Akonde. Bye for now.